Coming up on Wave TV, Josh Diaz brings us a brand new great debate with some special guests. And catch up on your favorite movies with a brand new film report. Good morning, Somerville. I'm Joel Bryant. And I'm Ann Bailey. Today is November 4th, and Wave TV starts now. Now we head to Kristen Witte, who gives us an inside look at our foreign exchange students. Somerville High School serves as a temporary home for four foreign exchange students from different parts of the world. Wave TV interviews sponsors and district officials to learn about the process. Per our district policy, we allow for four foreign exchanges at each of our three high schools each school year. Students work with organizations like CCTE, Academic Year in America, and ITS to become exchange students. Applications have to be accepted and completed three months prior to the start of the school year. So for example, for the 2017-18 school year, we accept applications right now all the way through May. A student experience is coordinated through an agency in Spain who at the same time coordinates with an agency in the United States. So pretty much the agency deals with the school and the school tells the agency what kind of classes uh, you know, the exchange student needs. Next week, Wave TV introduces our four foreign exchange students. Until next time, for Wave TV, I'm Kristen Whitty. Thanks, Kristen. Now it's time to catch up on your movies with Ellen Guilford, followed by Bradley Simpson testing your knowledge in Disney quotes, and Joel Bryant bringing us a brand new epic or fail. Welcome back to the Film Report, where this time we'll be taking a look at what movies you should look out for in the month of November. Get ready to discover the magic behind the Marvel Universe, travel back to the Wizarding World, and explore the seas with your newest Disney princess. November 4th marks the release of Marvel Comics' Doctor Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch stars as Stephen Strange, a world-famous neurosurgeon who loses the use of his hands in a car accident. This injury forces him to search for healing in unlikely places and is soon trained to be the most powerful sorcerer in existence. He must now protect our world against the dark forces planning to destroy reality. And remember everyone, it's a Marvel movie, so make sure you stay in your seats until the credits are finished rolling. Just a few weeks later, J.K. Rowling brings you back to the Wizarding World, this time in 1920s New York. A young man named Newt accidentally releases several magical creatures into the human world while in New York City, and by doing so, also causes tensions between magical and non-magical people in the process. Sorry, we call them muggles. Newt desperately attempts to correct his mistake and make things right, all while attempting to find the Fantastic Beast themselves. The film is set to be released on November 18th. Right before Thanksgiving, Disney introduces us to their newest Disney princess in Moana. The story revolves around a young girl named Moana who sets out on an ocean adventure to seek the help of Maui, a legendary demigod, in order to help protect her home island. The film stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Maui and features music from Lin-Manuel Miranda, famous for his composition of Hamilton. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. Moana is scheduled to be released on November 23rd. That's it for the month of November. For Wave TV, I'm Ellen Guilford. Good morning, Somerville. My name is Bradley Simpson, and recently I went around questioning students to see if they knew about their Disney quotes. Let's see how you guys did. Ooh. The girl, the main character. I might know. Some people weren't melting. Horse thing or whatever it is? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that one. Olaf? Simba. Um... Tinkerbell? Pixie does. Um... Simba is the child... What does the name start with? What's the first letter start with? Was it Peter Pan? Mufasa, Mufasa. Yeah. Uh, Dory Nemo. Nor Demo. Nemo. <laughs> Nemo. 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 Dory! <laughs> Wave TV, I'm Bradley Simpson. Good morning, Somerville. I'm Joel Bryant, and today I hit the halls and have you guys guess whether these videos will be epics or fails. Cross the 
Epic or fail? I'm hitting a drop. I gonna say fail. Say fail. Oh! Yeah. Oh, that's epic. That's epic. Little no baby's epic. You fall. He gonna hit the truck. Fail. No, I think it's because I want to contradict whatever Haley says. <laughs> fail. He's gonna flip over. It's yeah, gonna be epic. Is, He's gonna do a backflip. It's, it's, it's gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. Oh, oh, oh yeah, wow. Epic. epic. Chancellor being the safety. It was really over the top of it. I don't like them, so that's a fail. Who, the giant? That's a fail. Yeah, that's, oh, a, that's, that's a fail. My team. That's a fail. fail. They probably should have been able to intercept oh, him because he's the one who's driving. Ooh, that's nice. Ah, can't do that. <laughs> Definitely can't do that. Oh. Are well, you playing hot potato with the ball? <laughs> yeah. That's not that epic. I can do that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You guys did a pretty good job out there. It looks like I'll have to make the videos a little harder next time. For Wave TV, I'm Joel Bryant. Now Chef Huff gives us a tasty cookie recipe. Hi, I'm Chef Eric Huff, and today we're making white chocolate chip cookies. We started off by the creamy method in our mixers. The batter consists of butter, flour, white chocolate chips, baking powder, sugar, and a pinch of salt. We then went to drop dough on our cookie sheet and then we baked at 350 for about 10 to 12 minutes. Hello, I'm Chef Eric Huff, and we are having our first annual uh, Thanksgiving feast. Uh, this year it's going to be a dessert party um, filled with uh, sweets and treats. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. It'll be a $5 ticket, um, and once again, that's November 16th. So get your tickets while they last. Thanks, Chef Huff, for that delicious looking cookie recipe. Now Josh Diaz brings us a politically charged great debate, followed by Ann Bailey bringing us the second edition of Puppet Politics. Good morning, America. We are coming to you live from Somerville, South Carolina, the largest highway restroom stop in America. Today we have a debate for you so hilarious, it has to be one of the biggest mistakes in American history. Please welcome our candidates, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Okay, so we got a few questions from Somerville High School, and our first one comes from Denny Farrell. Mrs. Clinton and Mr. Trump, since both of you have proven yourselves unwilling or unable to abide by your own marriage vows, why should anyone in the country, including me, believe anything you have to say regarding a campaign promise? Thank you. That was a really good question, and I have a really good answer for you, Denny. But my opponent, he does not respect women. He treats them like slobs. He calls them pigs and dogs. Wrong. You're wrong. Well, your skin is orange. Nobody respects women more than me. I hold them in the highest regard. Bill Clinton does not. And I don't even think Hillary does either. And I promise I will make Mexico build that wall. That I can tell you. I have a few more questions to ask you. This next one comes from Chris Digby. Let's go take a look. Given our position being indebted to so many other countries financially, how do we reposition ourselves as a leader in the global community? What are some practical steps you would take as president to reposition us as leaders, both financially and militarily? One word, ISIS. We've given them so many chances, and all of that rests on Obama. And financially, I can get us out of any situation. Well, the Clinton Foundation has helped dozens of countries in the past. You mean taken money from? Well, my opponent has gone through numerous debts. Companies that are at least in 65 million in debt. If you don't believe me, you can fact check me at HillaryClinton.com. More like WikiLeaks. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why, Hillary? Well, this this country needs a strong and <coughs> I uh, five seconds. I just too bad. That's all you get to say. I want Obama back, man. It wasn't it wasn't great. It was it was yeah it was better. The Obamas are my dearest friends. 
mostly Michelle, but they've been helping me through this entire campaign and I cannot wait to replace Obama. Obama is the problem. Vote me, DT. And sadly, that's all the time we have. Who will you be voting? I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't do this, okay? I'm not. And sadly, that's all the time we have. Who will you be voting for? Be sure to stay tuned until November 8th to figure out who will be the next president of the United States. I'm Anderson Cooper for Wave TV. Good night, everybody. On the previous episode of Puppet Politics, we briefed you on the issues and explained the controversy surrounding each candidate. On this episode, we take a more optimistic approach and look at the positive aspects of both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Last time, we began with Clinton, so let's take a look at Trump first this time around. Donald Trump is often criticized for being insensitive, but he's in fact chalked up a fair amount of good deeds. Such deeds include providing sanctuary for Jennifer Hudson, Grammy Award winner, when three of her family members were murdered. Trump housed her in Trump Towers free of charge and provided security for her and some of her family members while they grieved. Trump's wealth has also provided opportunities for him to be charitable, a notable example being his contributions to Sergeant Andrew Tamaresi, who was chained to a bed and beaten during his seven months of captivity in a Mexican prison. Upon his release, Trump sent him a 25 thousand dollar check. Finally, Trump aided a family with a medical emergency when Andrew Tin, a three-year-old, needed to fly to New York for special attention. He was unable to pass through security at the airport due to his medical equipment, so Donald Trump used his private jet to send Andrew and his parents to New York. Also in Trump's arsenal of good is his success in business, which has many voters saying he will handle the economy well. Such successes include Trump Towers, the Grand Hyatt Hotel, and New York City's Woolman Rink, all of which were considered risky projects in the beginning, but generated profit in the end. Finally, Trump is praised for his transparency. He rejects political correctness. Voters say he calls it as it is, which is ultimately to America's benefit. Hillary Clinton has also done good things as a politician. She's experienced as a public servant, having been an activist, first lady, senator, and secretary of state. In addition to experience, she has won a number of awards for her achievements, including Arkansas Woman of the Year. She was included in Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential Lawyers in America and has received the Lifetime Achievement Award for her aid in Chernobyl Accident Relief. Also included in her awards are the Mother Teresa Award, the Nursing Health and Humanity Award, and the Energy Leadership Award. Finally, Hillary Clinton is praised for her adamance. A past conservative, she was once adamant in her right-wing stances, but is now steadfast in her beliefs that fall on the left. Supporters criticize her switch, but admire her commitment to her beliefs once she adopts them. Such commitment has been illustrated during her time as Secretary of State, in which she collectively spent 401 days traveling to what added up to be 112 countries. Both candidates are experienced in different areas that have potential to benefit the country. Both have earned their share of accomplishments, and both will be on the ballot November 8th. Who will you vote for? In student news, the 2016-2017 Reflections Arts Program theme will be What is Your Story? Talk to your arts teachers or contact Ms. Shook in room 265 for more information. The deadline is November 10th. Somerville High School's Heritage Trust Federal Credit Union is located in front of the auditorium and is open anytime during ILT. As a student of Somerville High School, you are automatically qualified for membership and can easily open your checkings and savings account today. Don't forget, it's not just for students, but also for faculty and staff. Stop by and join the Heritage Trust family today. That's all we have for Wave TV today. Don't forget to submit your pictures to hashtag Wave TV by posting pictures on Twitter and Instagram under the hashtag Wave TV.